is this brief mortal life, if not the pursuit of legacy? I, Rickon Stark. I, Corlys Valarian. I, Orman Baratheon. Promise to be faithful to King Viserys and to his named heir, Princess Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra Targaryen. Men would sooner put the realm to the torch than see a woman ascend the Iron Throne. We play an ugly game. You have the determination to win it. History does not remember blood. It remembers names. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my brand new House of the Dragon trailer. Big surprise, they dropped some new footage. There's a whole bunch to talk about. So if you're brand new to the channel, I will be doing videos for all the episodes. It's going to start in August this year, as per the trailer says. It'll be just like my videos that I did for the original Game of Thrones series. Obviously, this is set a couple hundred years before earlier in the timeline. It's all about the Dance of the Dragons, this giant Targaryen civil war. This trailer jumps around in the timeline quite a bit, so obviously this show is going to feature way more flashbacks just from the start, and I think that's in service of doing five to seven seasons plus however many seasons they intend on going, because the actual Dance of the Dragons was only about three years long, the actual war itself didn't last that long, so all these flashbacks with the younger versions of the characters, and some of them are a little more obvious than others, I will point out who is who during the trailer, are meant to show how things just spin out of control in Westeros in the years leading up to the actual Dance of the Dragons. This trailer is meant to focus a little bit more on Rhaenyra herself, her family, her father, King Viserys, who's king of Westeros at the time, and her remarriage to Daemon Targaryen, because they're obviously going to be some of the biggest characters on the show. The two biggest characters obviously being the leader of the Blacks and the leader of the Greens, the two different factions in the Dance of the Dragons, which is Princess Rhaenyra and the new queen, Queen Alicent, the older version of the character. They were actually very good friends when they were young, and they kind of want to show that. Like, they started out being really good friends, but things got really bad between them, as you would expect when the Iron Throne comes into play. So even though the original show was all about who will win the Iron Throne, this actually starts within the Targaryen family. It's all about the succession. Keeping it within the family, everyone posts all their sister-wiving jokes. They even have that moment during the trailer where you see the older version of Rhaenyra remarrying to older Daemon Targaryen intermingling their blood because they're both dragon riders, they both have Valyrian blood, they're both members of the House Targaryen, which is why during the main show, later in the timeline obviously, when Daenerys was talking to Jon Snow all about being a Targaryen, why it wasn't a big deal that they were related. Because he was brand new to the Targaryen family, he thought it was actually a pretty big deal, and she's like, well, I never even thought about it twice. People always did this in my family. It was like a non-issue to her that they were closely related. Technically, she was his aunt. They weren't actually like brother and sister, so it wasn't quite as crazy as Jamie and Cersei. If you're making jokes about how crazy that is, I would say the only spicier person in the history of A Song of Ice and Fire would be someone like Craster, for obvious reasons. But at the beginning of the trailer, there's that voiceover dialogue that says, what is this brief mortal life, if not the pursuit of a legacy? That's actually an older version of Corlys Falerion, the sea snake, who is the ruler of Driftmark here, right next to Dragonstone. They're big vassal house of House Targaryen. They also have Valyrian blood. That's why all the Valerians have that white hair. But he's speaking to an older version of Rhaenyra, and when he's talking about going for legacy, he's talking about the beginning of the Dance of the Dragons, this big fight that they're about to have. Like you see later in the trailer, an older version of Rhaenyra is standing in Dragonstone in the map table room around the giant map table of Westeros, as if they're planning this giant battle out. Then you see Daemon Targaryen at Dragonstone with Missary and their entourage a little bit earlier in the timeline, completely different scene. They're bringing a dragon egg to Otto Hightower, the Hand of the King, in the Kingsguard. Later you see them pull swords on each other, like both camps pull swords on each other as if something is about to go down. What I think is going on here is that he's actually bringing the dragon egg that he technically stole and tried to give to Missaria, who's his lover, who got pregnant with his bastard, because he wanted his bastard to become a dragon rider. He has the Targaryen blood, so theoretically any bastard that he sired would become a dragon rider. His older brother is King Viserys, so like he's the younger brother of the king. He's called the Rogue Prince because he basically did everything that you're not supposed to do. He's someone who's always plotting, always going his own way, always thinking about how he can win the Iron Throne. 
But when he got his lover, Viserya, pregnant here and tried to give her a dragon egg, King Viserys, his older brother, was like, hell no, bring that dragon egg right back. So the king's guard, the hand of the king, went to take the dragon egg back. They're just trying to show you some of the enmity between some of the big factions in the Targaryen Civil War, the Dance of the Dragons. Otto Hightower was the father of Alicent, who became the new queen, remarrying to King Viserys. This scene of someone riding that giant dragon to the Red Keep is Princess Rhaenyra riding her dragon Cyrax. Then this whole next scene that you see inside the Iron Throne Room is a younger version of King Viserys naming a younger version of Rhaenyra, his heir apparent, enforcing the other current lords of Westeros at the time to swear fealty to his next heir, like he's naming her the next queen of Westeros. The reason why this was a big deal at the time is because he didn't have any natural born sons to pass the throne to, and typically in Westeros what would usually happen is that the throne would pass to the oldest living male heir. Obviously that did not sit well with Princess Rhaenyra, who wound up starting the Dance of the Dragons. We see a couple brand new characters that we didn't see in the previous trailer. We see Rickon Stark, who's the current Lord of House Stark at that time in history. Corlys Valerian himself, who we saw in the previous trailers. He's the Lord of Driftmark, the Sea Snake. Probably the greatest living fleet commander at this time in history. Obviously, they're trying to show you some familiar things like, oh, remember all these big positions in Westeros, these big people during the original Game of Thrones series? Like, they're in the Iron Throne room. Obviously, the Iron Throne looks a little bit different. There are melted swords all around it. But Borman Baratheon is the predecessor of Robert Baratheon after they just got done in the trailer having this scene talking about legacy. The whole thing with King Viserys is that he knew that he didn't have a male heir, but he loved his daughter, Princess Rhaenyra, so he would always bring her to all of his meetings. He would teach her how to be a great ruler, so her whole life she was kind of groomed for this position to be the leader of Westeros. Everything was pointing towards her becoming this great ruler of Westeros. But, and it's a very big but, later in the timeline, her father, King Viserys, winds up getting remarried to one of her best friends who has been living at court for a long time, the younger Alicent, and he winds up having a son with her. So the king finally does have a son. So most of the lords of Westeros, after this fact later in the time, are like, well, hey, we have a son to pass the throne now to. It doesn't matter that he wanted his older daughter, Princess Rhaenyra, who's now a much older woman, to become the next queen. So it became this big battle with the heir apparent who'd been named the heir and the actual son. That's why right after you see that ceremony where they all are meant to swear fealty to the younger version of her character, she talks to Rhaenys about what happened and she's saying that she'll basically never be queen, like they'd rather see the realm burn than name a woman heir to the Iron Throne. Rhaenys was the oldest living daughter of the previous king who was king before Viserys. The line actually jumped to him because the realm held this great council and said, no, 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 we're not going to have a queen take the throne. Even though she's the oldest living heir of that previous king, the line's going to jump to another family line who's just the oldest living male heir and that wound up being Viserys. So that's why they call Rhaenys the queen who never was because she was meant to be queen but never was. So now we get to the Dance of the Dragons later in the timeline and it's like a here we go again kind of situation. It's the exact same situation. Then you see a much younger version of Alicent Hightower wearing her trademark green gown coming to what seems like young Rhaenyra's first wedding to Lord Corlys Valerian's son, Laenor Valerian. Then it shows an older version of Alicent much later in the timeline after she's become the new queen remarrying to King Viserys talking to her father, who's still Hand of the King, an older version of Otto Hightower, obviously played by the same person. He talks to her about having the stomach for what's coming, basically, this big dance of the dragons, like, are you going to win this game? The reason why they actually called the different factions the Blacks and the Greens is because that was the color of their gowns when they came to this big, great tourney that you saw in the previous trailers. Then you see Corlys Valerian bringing his family to the wedding of his oldest son, Laenor Valerian, to a younger version of Rhaenyra. Like, you see their wedding kind of play out a little bit, like she wears white, which is typically kind of weird for her, but it's meant to be like a wedding gown. There's a scene of younger Daemon Targaryen also at the wedding, kind of laughing it all, plotting his own game, not really taking anything seriously. You see this big funeral procession at Driftmark with a bunch of Lords of the Realm, a bunch of the Valerians, a bunch of the Targaryens mourning this person. It's probably the death of her first husband, Laenor Valerian, the person that we literally just saw her getting married to earlier in the timeline. The older version of Rhaenyra seems like she mourns him a little bit, then she turns around and throws some weird shade. There's a lot of tension between her and the older version of Alicent, who's already become the new queen who's standing with Kristen Cole, who winds up becoming Lord of the Kingsguard under King Viserys. Then you see another younger version of Daemon being hauled before the king by the Kingsguard, not wearing his armor or his weapons. This is probably him getting yelled at by his brother, the king. Like I said, he is the rogue prince. He was not well liked inside Westeros. There's a brief scene of Kristen Cole being pissed off. And then, like I said, this scene is the remarriage of older Rhaenyra and older Daemon Targaryen, letting their blood intermingle because that's the customs of their family. They're both Valyrian blood dragon riders. 
this also happened before the Dance of the Dragons. Like, they got remarried before the actual Civil War started. But you have to remember that Daemon Targaryen, also kind of plotting his way to the Iron Throne, felt like this was the best way to do it. Like, marry the person who was the heir apparent, this other person present her claim, then they start the Civil War, so he was hoping that they would win, and that would make him king of Westeros. Then there's a big Easter egg scene of older Alicent Hightower attacking older Rhaenyra with the cat's paws Valyrian dagger, the one that Arya used to kill the Night King, the same one that Littlefinger used to help start the War of the Five Kings in the first place. She was just one of the previous owners of the actual dagger. Zoom and enhance behind her here, this is Graham McTavish as Harold Westerling. At this time in history, he's the current Lord of the Kingsguard until his death when he was succeeded by Kristen Cole. Then there's a completely different scene of Daemon Targaryen at Dragonstone going to the nursery where they kept all the dragons at Dragonstone, seeing a giant dragon breathing fire on him. His dragon was called Caraxes, so this might be him. Then that last voiceover dialogue is Corlys Valerion again, same person, talking to an older version of Rhaenyra Targaryen saying, history doesn't remember blood. And that's just more of his conversation with the older version of her talking about the precipitation of the Dance of the Dragons, the actual civil war getting ready to begin. Gonna be way more dragons during House of the Dragon. Just way more of them were alive at this point in history. If you remember how big the dragons got during Game of Thrones Season 8, imagine most of the dragons are close to that, if not bigger. But obviously this is just like a taste of the footage. We'll get another trailer as we get a little bit closer. I was actually surprised that they drop it today. If you have any questions about any of the characters or what's going on with the footage, just write them below in the comments and I'll start doing more bonus videos as we get more footage. I've already done a couple videos for the series and the other trailers, so I'll link those below in the description. Everyone click here for my full Doctor Strange 2 review and click here for my full Moon Knight Episode 6 finale video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.